I'm going to show you how to take your development Flask app and deploy it to a production server. And the way we're going to do this is with something called GUnicorn, which is a web server gateway interface that's going to interface with your Flask app. And on the other side of that, you're going to have an Nginx proxy server. So basically, a user somewhere on the internet is going to visit your website via the Nginx proxy server. That's going to talk to GUnicorn, which is going to talk to your Flask app, execute the Python code, and send it back down the chain. This is part of a two-part video series. The first part was making that Flask app. I'm going to assume that you already went through that tutorial or you have a Flask app that you want to deploy. Otherwise, I have code on GitHub, which is linked below, that you can catch up with us as part of this tutorial. So otherwise, the only change that I made since the previous video is I... Um, well, I'm working with Vulture, and this is the IP address of my server. So all I did was I went into Google Domains, which is where I registered TonyBoney.com, and created an A record that maps TonyBoney.com to the IP address. Mm -hmm. So before we are accessing our Flask app via the IP address directly, um, and now if I start the server back up, instead of using the IP address, which should still work, let's type in TonyBoney dot com colon 5000 instead and we will serve the same exact web page okay so let's get on to the tutorial the first thing i want to do let's get out of here um, as you see we are using the root user which is not a good idea for production servers whether that's flask app or something else let's make a new user and run the app under that new user okay so we're going to do add user tony and that's going to add that user, ask for a password for that user. I'm going to type in a password. And I'll confirm it. Give him my name. And I'm just going to leave the rest of this blank. That looks good. And if this user needs pseudo privileges, which we will to install some packages, we can do user mod dash a capital G pseudo and then the name of the user hit enter and now that user has pseudo privileges um, to make sure this user can log into the remote server via SSH let's just double check inside of our ETC SSH SSH D underscore config file and in here is there's something called password authentication uh, we <clears throat> Let's set that to yes. So that way the user that we just created with his password can log into the server. And to apply those changes, we will do a system CTL restart SSHD. And now we can exit out of the server as root and log back in with our new user. So SSH Tony at, and this time we don't have to use the IP address. We can use the domain name if you're following along. So TonyBony.com. Hit enter type in that user's password. And now we are logged in as the new user to our remote Ubuntu server. Now, like I was saying, I have some code up here on GitHub at github.com slash Tony flow. If you go into my repository section, you can clone the Flask app demo that we've been working on uh, up until the previous video. So just come in here, copy that URL, and then open up your terminal window and we'll do git clone that URL and we will clone it into the hike app just like we did before so that's going to download all that code now we have a hike folder and um, because this is a new user we have to set up our python virtual environment again so let's do that next let's do python 3-m venv and then we're going to make that virtual environment inside of env folder in our desktop called teton t-e-t-o-n and when that's finished create it being created, we can activate the virtual environment source, env, teton, bin, activate. All right, we are now inside of our virtual environment. From this point, any from this point forward, any Python or pip commands will be self-contained in this environment. So, that being said, let's do pip install flask because we will need that, and. With that installed, let's go into our hike directory and let's bring it up, python peak.py, and let's just make sure everything's working out. So we will refresh the page over here.
And yep, there we go. Let's go climb a mountain. All right, next let's set up the web server gateway interface with gunicorn. So let's control C to get out of our development server. And we'll do a pip install gunicorn, hit enter. And that installs really quick. So um, inside of our hike directory right next to peak.py, let's make a web server gateway interface.py file. And this is gonna be very similar to, um, let me just show you over here. So as a reminder, in peak.py we have from flask import flask, and then if name equals main, we do this. We're gonna do something very similar in our web server gateway interface. So from peak import app, okay, so let's let's review from this in in this directory there's a file called peak, and inside peak we define an app an app variable. Okay, so that's all that's doing. We're importing that app variable here. And then if, like we did before, if name equals main, we're going to run our app, app.run. And we're going to run the app without any of those other um, host names or port numbers before we were doing the development server stuff here. But now we are running the app directly. And now, after this, we're going to set up the infrastructure to handle that in a production environment. So, um, but let's make sure gunicorn's working. We'll run gunicorn dash dash bind 0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 colon 5000, kind of like we were doing before. And then we're going to specify this web server gateway interface file that's in this current directory colon app, which we import it into that file. So let's run that and let's see if our website still loads. Okay, there you go. So let's go back here, get out of our development server and deactivate our Python virtual environment. Now what we're going to do is set up the system process system service file that's going to basically point to our Python virtual environment and point to our Flask app. So that way if the server ever reboots, or the process crashes in some cases, it'll automatically bring it back up. And we can access the system CTL uh, start, stop, restart, status commands, as I'll show you in just a bit. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's make a new file in the etc system d system directory, and we'll call it peak.service. Okay, in here, rather than uh, typing everything in front of you, I'm gonna just copy and paste some code. This code is also available on the GitHub, and I'll just walk through it line by line to show you kind of what's going on. So this is just a description of the, the service that we are creating. That's the gunicorn instance to serve peak Flask app. Uh, it's gonna start up after the network is ready, and then the service itself is gonna be run under the user Tony, which we just created, and the group www.data, which is a standard group for serving HTTP requests. And the working directory is going to be our home directory slash hike, which is our Flask app. The environment is going to be our Python virtual environment named Teton, and then inside of there's the bin directory. And then the actual command that's going to execute is the gunicorn command, which we kind of experimented with just a bit ago. It's going to spin up three workers or three separate processes. It's going to bind a Unix socket, a peak called peak.sock, uh, which is going to be created in our Flask app root directory. And as we saw before, uh, we have that new file in there called web server gateway interface. And inside of there, there is a, an app variable. So that's basically what that means. And then this is uh, install one by multiple user target. That's, I believe that's so this is accessible for every user in the system. So let's save that file. And what we're gonna do is start it up. So sudo system ctl start peak. And if you get this kind of error message, you can just uh, reload as it's helping you out here. So sudo system daemon reload. And then we'll try that again, start the peak app. And then we can do sudo system ctl enable peak. And what enable does is uh, it's going to start this process automatically when the system starts up. And then we'll do sudo system ctl status peak. And everything looks pretty good. It's active and running. So the next thing we want to do, since we're 
taken care of the Flask app, we've taken care of the web server gateway interface, let's go ahead and set up the Nginx web server, the proxy server. So we can do that with sudo apt install Nginx. And as is standard with most Nginx deployments, we'll make a configuration file with, or at the location of etc, Nginx, sites available, and we'll call it peak.conf. So inside of this server block, we're gonna listen on port 80 instead of the 5000 development port that we used before. Um, since I have a domain name, I'm gonna specify that here, the non-WW -ver version and the WWW version. And then um, the location, we're gonna map it to slash, so there's no path after you go to tonyboney.com. We're gonna include the standard proxy parameters and this is uh, the Unix socket that is going to be created inside of our Flask app, and it's going to be called peak.sock, which we referenced before in the system, uh, the systemd file. So let's save that. And also, as is standard with most uh, Nginx deployments, we'll create a sim link from the Nginx sites available directory to the Nginx sites enabled directory and what this does is basically publishes those changes um, as far as nginx is concerned now we can test out our configuration file to make sure there's no errors with the configuration with sudo nginx t and everything come back comes back looking good and finally we will restart nginx with systemctl okay before we test anything out we have to remember that we have a firewall running uh, let's check it out sudo UFW status. Right now uh, we have the development port open. Let's close that back down. So we'll do sudo UFW delete allow 5000. And there's a cool shorthand here sudo UFW allow nginx full. And what that's going to do is basically allow port 80, port 443, all the standard HTTP ports. So if we do sudo UFW status, you'll see that we have our standard SSH port and then Nginx ports as well. All right, so our app is running, Nginx is up, and I think it's time to test it out. So let's go ahead and refresh this. Actually, no, we're gonna, let's go directly, get rid of this port, go to HTTP colon slash slash our domain name or IP address, hit enter, and we get a 502 bad gateway error. Um, if you do run into this issue, it's a permissions issue, and I'm going to show you how to debug it. Um, if we look at the, if we use the tail command, which just shows the end of a log file, at var log nginx, and, there's, and then there, there's a file called error.log, we'll see that, let's see, permission denied when it was trying to access the socket file. Okay, so we can change that really easily in with the chmod command. Uh, we have to change the permission of the home Tony directory since we're serving it out of there to 775, excuse me. So with that one simple change, we can refresh the page. And now our Flask app is being served via Nginx, via the web server gateway interface called GUnicorn. That's about it for this one. If you want your Flask app to work over HTTPS, you can get a free SSL certificate with Let's Encrypt, and this video should point you in the right direction. Thanks guys, subscribe, and I'll see you over there.